The classy chassis is definitely not a place you go to find JCPenney cows. I think I like C4 Corvettes because they're a very memorable car to me. I've had some really crazy experiences in Corvettes in general, but it seems like the C4 Corvettes bring out the wildest stories. And it's kind of one of those things like you don't plan for it to be crazy, but it ends up going crazy. This is an old story. This is, oh man, this is 20 years ago, back when Rabbit was a bunny. And I have one friend that got me into selling collector cars. He's the one that really showed me the way on moving collector cars. I actually bought my first collector car from him. And he also dealt with salvage cars. I mean, he'd buy anything. You know, he was just kind of in anything. He's a wheeler dealer from way back. He's old school, classically trained. And uh, so there was a really big event in Indianapolis coming up. It was a good guy's car show uh, at Indy Raceway Park. And, you know, it's a huge show and there's a lot of good cars you can buy out there and get some different inventory, not stuff that's sitting around local that everybody's seen. Get some fresh stuff. So he was flipping trading cars, whatnot, selling some, buying some, whatnot up there. He calls me up on a Friday afternoon. He goes, Rob, what are you doing? And I said, I about to call it a day. It's Friday night. I think we're going to go out and get in some trouble. He said, don't do that. I'm in a little bit of a problem right now. I got a problem. I said, well, what's going on? He goes, well, I'm up here at Indy. And I said, well, what's the problem? He goes, well, I left the titles to my cars back at the, at the dealership. I said, really? He said, go to the dealership. You know where the key's at. Go in. Manila folder on my desk. He said, hell, grab your car. Run on up here. Spend a weekend with me. He said, hell, you can help me get a few cars moved around. I'll make it worth your while. Uh, good enough. Ain't got nothing better going on. I rode by the dealership. It's locked up tight. Found the spare key. Open the door, I walk inside, manila folder's laying there, open manila, manila folder, title's in it, check. And at the time, all I had was my ACI convertible Corvette that I sure as hell didn't want to drive to Indianapolis. So, pick me out something good. What you got to drive? And I noticed when I, when I came in, there's a polo green 96 C4 six-speed LT4 car sitting there. I'm like, that kind of caught my eye. Seeing a set of Corvette keys, you know, seeing a Corvette key fob. Doors unlocked, and I said, and that's what I'm driving. Had a paper tag on it. Good enough for me. I noticed it was a little dirty. So I actually ran it by the house when I grabbed my clothes and washed it right quick. Didn't think much about it. Still had a bunch of crap inside of it. Papers were jammed up on the dash. Didn't think anything about it. I really wasn't worried about the inside of it. I headed up the road, Indiana. We're having a great time. Jamming out. I almost put the top down. Stopping, you know, grab some dinner and keep them out. At this point, it's midnight. I go into the Huddle House and got some of the best customer service I ever had in my life. There's a lady comes in with a Marlboro hanging out of her mouth. She says, what can I get you? Well, I like a cheeseburger. And the guy beside me, the booth over for me, I'm eating by myself, but the guy in the booth over for me ordered a T-bone steak. You can tell she was really thrilled about that. So she turns around with a cigarette still hanging out of her mouth. She said, oh, darling, don't forget my side salad. And this was hilarious. She pulls out this big bowl of like pre-made salad, I guess. She takes her hand, sticks a fork in it, and slides it on the table. I'll take my cheeseburger to go. Eventually got into Indy, and uh, my buddy was staying at the Adams Mark Hotel, which is a very nice hotel in downtown Indy. I actually don't think it's even Adams Mark anymore, but anyway, really pretty swanky little hotel for a car show um, in Indy. Well, there, this was also the host hotel for the show. So there you got cars everywhere. And I actually had to park in another parking lot because there's so many show cars there and all that stuff. As I got out of the car, he called. And he said, hey, you got the titles? I said, sure do. He goes, just leave them in your car. Just make sure we got them. That's good. Just keep them there. Good enough. No big deal. So as I'm walking up to the Adams Mark, you know, he's got the key to the room and he's not there. It's a little, I mean, it's late. And, you know, everybody's out drinking parties. It's like a parking lot party out there. And, uh, you know, so what do I do? I make me some friends. Might have had a beer or two, maybe, you know, adult beverage. And I got to talking to a girl that was very familiar. I'm not going to tell you her name because if I tell you her name, it's going to instantly tell you the company that her and her family own. Um, I will say this it is a very, very, very large automotive performance parts company. And um, I'd be willing to bet that every person watching this has had one of their catalogs in their hand at one time. And I'll leave it there. She was a little older than me, attractive, 
And we got talking, shooting the bull. You know I mean, a lot to laugh, cut up. Next thing you know, she's like, what are you doing? I said, I'm just hanging out, you know, waiting on my buddy. Well, we're fixing to all go out. You got a car here? I said, I sure do. So I got a little green Corvette sitting over there. So she gets in the car with me and we go out riding around. We go bar hopping in Indy and we end up at the classy chassis. The classy chassis is definitely not a place you'd go to find JCPenney cows. These girls, they're the higher mileage variety, I would say. Maybe, maybe some collision damage, bad car facts, true miles unknown, things of that nature. Definitely, definitely a sketch place. Next thing you know, we're driving around and you know, showing out a little bit. Got a six-speed vet, LT4. Runs pretty good. I'm playing around. She spin around a park a lot or you know, busted my ass going around. Indy, you know, just having a good time. Get back to the hotel. I done had like four missed calls from my buddy. Where you at? He's already fell asleep. She let me crash with her. Very nice. Very nice. So next morning, shoot, I woke up straight up six o'clock. <laughs> Shave, showered, red rock. Grab my duffel bag. As soon as I walked out into the lobby, there stands my buddy. He goes, where in the hell you been? I said, long story. We got to get to the show. He said, I got a 64 GTO bought that I want you to drive back. So I got in the car with him and I said, well, I got those titles. He said, I'm not worried about it. So I get in the car with him. We go to the show in one of his cars. So we go to the show. I drive the GTO back. I'm going back to the show. So, because we want to, we obviously just pay cash for a car. You don't want to leave it sitting there. So we take it back to the hotel. So I brought the GTO back and almost hit a deer on the way, which was nuts too. Seeing all this area in the daylight that I was just driving at night in this Corvette, it looked way worse during the day. And I'm like, oh my God, I've been driving through here. Bring the GTO back, get the Corvette. Well, I go back to the show. This show's huge. I mean, there's vendors everywhere and everything else. We had a vendor, it's a local vendor that was there. He makes car tags and decals and stuff like that. And he's like, man, he said, I am so tired of this damn fair carnival food they got here. He said, I would love just to get something to eat. Hell, just toss some keys to the vet. I said, hell, there's a Corvette parked up on the parking deck. Just take it. So hell, he takes a Corvette and he goes to lunch. Comes back, you know, and he's like, man. He said, thank you. He said, that, that really just re-energized me. You know, I needed that. Nothing to it. So heck, I'm walking around. Next thing you know, I'm getting phone calls from my new friend. She said, what you doing tonight? I said, I don't know. What are we doing? Well, we go back out again. And uh, I actually wanted to introduce my buddy to him. And there's a little bar right out. As soon as, I mean, you hang a right out of Indy Raceway Park. There's a little bar on the left. And I remember it's next to a four-way stop. And it's a straight shot. It runs you into the main drag. And that's how you go to Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It's this little hole-in-the-wall bar. And we stopped there and started drinking there. And my buddy got so sick that he, I mean, he literally, like, he felt like he was going to die instantly. And uh, he's like, dude, I got to go back to the room. I can't hang with y'all. So, hey, we went back out again. And we ended back up at the classy chassis. And it's just as raunchy as it was the night before. Ended up crashing again with her. So, next morning, get up. He goes, did you even come in the room? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I did. I did. I, I just laid on top of the covers, man. I just sacked out. I'm good. He's like, whatever. All right, all right. And uh, so, anyway, so this is Sunday. We're driving back. He's getting all the cars lined up. And I already gave him the titles, you know, for what he sold. And uh, he told me, he said, where'd you drive up here? So I drove a little Corvette up here. He goes, what Corvette? I said, the green C4. You drove that green C4 Corvette up here. I'm like, yeah, so I've been driving all weekend. Where's it at? I said, sitting in the parking lot. I want to show you something. I don't want to tell you. I want to show you something. So, and keep in mind, I'm running around on a paper tag. And I'm loading it out, loading it out. And uh, he said, I want to show you something. I noticed, I told you there was papers all over the dash. He pulls a manila folder that was on top of the dash out. There's no VIN plate on it. He said, I bought this at the salvage sale. This car's parts only. It doesn't have a title, a VIN, anything. This car was being deported and when they got busted with it. And he said, you drove this car all the way from Greenville, South Carolina to Indianapolis, Indiana. And then all the other places that he didn't know about with no, he said, imagine if you got pulled over with no proof of ownership whatsoever. And then they get to looking. And I mean, they did not do the best job in the world removing the VIN plate. It looks like they did it with a bush ax. Then you start looking at the doors and the stickers are peeled out of the doors. And I didn't notice these things. You know, you didn't look for that. Needless to say, that drive home in that Corvette, 10 and two, about 60 mile an hour, just cruising, just cruising. My buddy behind me, and just cruising. It was a very, 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 
very unexciting trip home. We parked it. And that's the last time the little C4 Corvette ever went on a road trip. But a very memorable trip. And just one more fun C4 Corvette story. We'd like to thank Vincero Watches for supporting VinWiki this month. Vincero makes bold, stylish, and well-priced watches out of exceptional materials, and there's a link in the description below for a discount. So check out their website and find the watch that helps make the statement that you want the world to see.